This is an overview video of Bee Painter 1.0, which is now released. And um, yeah, in this video, we are going to talk about the features of Bee Painter. So, what is Bee Painter? Bee Painter is um, an add on for Blender, which gives you really nice painting tools and which helps you to create yeah, textures for your models. So actually Blender has um, some very nice painting um, features, but um, they're not very accessible and um, you have lots of sl uh, tabs you have to nav navigate through and um, well, this can be very cumbersome sometimes. So this is where B Painter comes in place. So actually you have um, this one tab where everything is unified and its goal is to create um, a very clean user interface where you have all the information you need at hand and if you need to create or set more advanced settings you can just do it um, with these advanced settings menus here so we will start with the color docker and um, then go through all the dockers here so first of all the color docker is as you see for organizing your colors and setting your colors for the brush so you can basically choose a color um, you can set the default colors here you can switch the colors and you have this color picker which is an improved color picker um, the cool thing is you have uh, the old color and you see the new color you are picking but uh, what also is different to Blender's usual um, color picker is that it picks the unshaded color so and not only from the layer you are painting on, it will pick the color from all mixed colors here. So this is the color picker. You have this color palette here where you can yeah, choose your colors from. Um, this color palette is, is available in any blend file, so you don't have to append uh, those. That, that's the cool thing about BPainter's uh, library system. It will be loaded in any blend file on startup. If you want to disable the color palette, just uncheck this box here or show the color uh, wheel here at the top. This is up to you. If you want to restore the defaults for the color palette or save uh, a new palette, just use this operator here. Okay, that's the color docker. Next up is the brush docker. The brush docker is um, a unified place to organize your brushes. You have a set of 14 brushes here and uh, you can access them very easily with all its custom settings. You can search for brushes and they will get selected immediately. Um, you have the important information like brush size, opacity, um, you can enable the pen pressure you can enable a smooth stroke, the brush curve is here. And the cool thing is Bee Painter also lets you adjust the brush curve with a shortcut. So you know that you can resize with the F shortcut. With Shift F you can set the opacity. And with Alt F you can now can set the brush hardness. So this is a Bee Painter specific feature now you can see that the brush curve is uh, reset here, which lets you very easily and quickly adjust the hardness of your brush. If you want to go into more detailed uh, settings, just press the uh, advanced settings operator here and you, here you have all important or more detailed um, settings. You can save custom brush settings, you can restore settings, you can add new brushes and delete brushes. That's up to you, but by default, Bee Painter ships with a nice set of presets. Next up is the Brush Texture Docker. Well, the Brush te Texture Docker lets you add textures to your brushes. So let's say you want to use this texture, just select it, and you're good to go. You can just paint. That way it's uh, removed. With E you can switch to the eraser. 
press E again and you are back to your previous brush. Um, also, what is, cool, what, what is really cool, um, B Painter organizes the textures in directories. So let's say we create a new directory here. My textures. Now let's copy a few textures, or let's say yeah, this textures we are going to copy into that folder. And it, when we go to B Painter now, you see that we have the My Textures here. Then we reload everything, and we have that textures here immediately, and we can use them. So this is a very easy and fast way to access textures and. Um, yeah, create new ones, new custom textures. You can use textures as mask, or you can just use them as color texture. So that way you're going to use it as color texture, and that way you're going to use it as a mask. You can show the texture in the viewport, invert it, or set the contrast here. That's the brush texture docker. The stencil texture docker is for using stencils in the viewport. So let's say we choose this one here. Now you see that we have the stencil here. We can put it uh, somewhere and then just draw and you see that this it will mask out everything. Um, you can choose which one you want. You can also create uh, new categories for your stencil textures, load in your custom stencil textures, invert them, reset the tone mapping here, reset the transformation, which will put it back into the left corner. So this is the stencil shapes, docker. And finally, we are going to talk about the paint layer docker, which is quite handy and really powerful. The paint layer docker will differ from the internal renderer and cycles renderer. So the cycles renderer is a little bit more powerful and uh, offers a few more features. So what can you do with the paint layer docker? Well, you have a layer stack here. As you know it from any painting application, you can create new layer. You can move them up and down. You can delete them and you have uh, a few different types of layer. You can create a normal layer, you can create an adjustment layer. So let's say we use this hue layer. Now we can set the hue. And the cool thing is it is um, a non-destructive workflow. So this will basically just modify the complete stack below. And we can always reset it to different values. Um, same goes for the RGB curve. We can change the contrast or whatever we want here, the RG and B values. And let's say we want to um, not take it effect on the complete model, just on a certain area. We can select the layer and just create a mask for that layer. And that way we can exactly define where the um, where the layer takes effect. The cool thing is we can also use the same mask for the RGB uh, curve layer here. So let's try it out. We say create paint, uh, mask layer, then choose existing image as layer and select your layer. So that's it. Now it will only take effect at the painted area here. And we can paint whatever we like here. And finally, I'm going to show the procedural layer. So this is the procedural layer, which we can also adjust, set the colors, set the scale, change the mix type, Let's say we use um, 
screen or what do we want? Divide, nope, overlay. And then change the opacity. Well, okay. And finally, I want to demonstrate the merge layer operator. You can um, merge your layers as you like. Just select the layers you want to merge and press OK. Here you can set the new layer size. And that's it. It will take some while because it uses the Blender baking in the background. So that's it. OK. I think that's enough for this overview and if you like to get more information on vPainter just head over to vPainter.artbynd.de and so this is the page for vPainter. Here you can get more information. Here we have this FAQ documentation and where you can get vPainter. So, Thanks for watching and if you liked that video please feel free to subscribe and share it with other people and see you in the next video.